What happened in the Great Depression? You know, we've all heard about um, you know everybody hunkering down, and we got to follow what Grandma says and what Grandpa says, and uh, and you know put the money underneath the mattress, and uh, we need to you know pay down the debts as quickly as possible. The rules have changed. When the Great Depression happened, people lost their houses. But do you know why? No, why? The regulation was different. There was no regulation. The banks got in trouble and they literally called all the notes. Right, without they said, notice. Yeah. Okay. No notice, no nothing. Just, hey, you know what? You still owe us money. We're upside down. We're calling this note. They can't do that now. You know, back then it was like a, a handshake and a wink. Mm. <laughs> the rules are different. And so if we continue to play the rules from 1935, we're going to miss out on what the rules say we do now. It's like playing checkers when we should be playing chess. Wow. We got to understand the rules of the right game. Now think about that for a second, because if you're playing checkers and chess, something's interesting. The board looks identical. Now you're sitting there going, you can't do that. How in the world are you making your stuff move three foot, three steps forward and one over? You can't do that. We got to take one step at a time. I'm using a different piece playing by the rules that we have. What are you doing? You see, you've got to learn the rules. We got to understand what's going on. So what is our opportunity to offset that? Where can we go? Yeah, let's now, get into that. <laughs> when you look at opportunities, you say, okay, there's two types of opportunities. Like, well, let's take investments first. Okay. I like to draw a line and above that line, it's public investments. And below that line, it's non-public investments. Okay. okay. Anytime you get into above the line investments, then you are making considerably less money than non-public investments. Okay. Example, public investments. Public investments would be the stock market. Gotcha. Public investments would be crypto. Public investments would be uh, a publicly traded REIT, real estate investment trust. So you're basically what you're doing is you are buying into a product or a business that is already established to the degree where they're just managing things. Now, if you're investing in the stock market, as an example, stocks go up and down, crypto goes up and down. The valuation of the underlined foundation doesn't change. One of the things I don't like about crypto personally is that it has no foundation. It's 100% emotion. I know yeah. there's guys that'll argue with me on that. Yeah, you yeah, know, here today, gone tomorrow. Today it's a meme, tomorrow it's forgotten. I, I totally yeah, like, I agree I, with that. There, there's no, it's not based on anything. So it, the only thing it's based on is supply and demand. It's just whatever the demand is. And so as long as people continue to jump in and continue to buy it and continue to be excited about it, there's demand. But the moment that shifts, it's gone. I mean, it, it can go away overnight. Correct. Government intervene. Totally. 100% regulations, anything else. Mm -hmm. So what about the stock market? Listen, if you take a, a company like um, Apple, Microsoft, yeah. their stock, Google, their company doesn't change valuation day to day. It doesn't. They're the same company yesterday they were today. Right. But their stock in the public world goes up and down based on emotion. Now, there's ways to play that game, but I got to be honest with you most people are not educated enough to do it. And Agreed. the idea of buy and hold is a sucker's bet. So below the, in, below the line, what does that mean? Below the line investments are actual investments into the asset itself. Now, the, the lowest form of below the line investment would be investing in a business or product that you own, AKA your own business. Okay. So you want to take uh, some real world, real life examples. If you're making the thousand, fifteen hundred dollars of extra cash flow, then A, I would invest in yourself. You are going to provide you the greatest return possible on your money. If you're investing a thousand dollars in education, that's going to get you to a place to where you're going to make fifty thousand dollars this year and a hundred thousand dollars next year. Is that a good investment? Yeah, absolutely. Is that a better return than the negative 3.5% you're going to get in your home equity? Yeah. Is it better than the 
eight to 12% that you're getting quoted in your mutual fund? Yeah. You see, when you invest in yourself, then your money is in alignment and is in alignment with your purpose. And when your purpose is in alignment with God's purpose, that's what we call the, the, the perfect storm. That's when God can really get you to a place where he can help you excel because now you're in purpose. Now, let me give you an example of how this plays out at a little bit higher level. There's other investments that are non-public investments and you probably never heard of them because they are only offered to people that are uh, what are re what are referred to as accredited investors. An accredited investor is somebody who makes, and I don't know the latest number, you can probably tell me this, Denzel, uh, it's $250,000, I believe, income uh, as an individual or three fifty dollars as a couple. Is that still correct? I believe that is still correct. And then there's like the or one or million. million dollar net worth. Yeah. Yep. So when you look at a million dollar net worth, then after you get over that, now you have all of these other opportunities. That's why I teach people to focus per first and foremost on increasing their income to a minimum of $250,000. So if you're at 40, 50, 60, 70, $80,000, no matter whether you're 40, 50, 60 years old, it doesn't matter. We're in a great time to generate revenue in ways that we never had before. So where you may have not earned a million dollars in your life, you can earn a million dollars in two, three years if you just put your head down and go. Now, I'm not saying you will. There's a lot of, a lot of things that happen there, but you can. There's example after example of that, including the man that I'm sitting here talking to. There's ways to make the money. You just have to be willing to look at it and see it. So I, I'm going to date myself a little bit because this is probably before, I don't know if you even remember this, Denzel, but back in 2008, 2008, um, everything crashed because of the, the mortgage crisis and, and all the different things. And there were all of these, Lehman went under, all the different ones went under, and they were worried that Goldman Sachs was about to go under. And they were worried that Goldman Sachs was about to crater. And so the execs at Goldman Sachs went to Warren Buffett and they asked Warren Buffett to invest $5 billion into Goldman Sachs because they knew that if Warren Buffett invested in Goldman Sachs, then all of the other people would come and invest in Goldman Sachs as well. And the stock, the stock would, uh, would go ahead and, and boom again. So Warren Buffett said, okay, I'll invest $5 billion. And then they went out and he invested the $5 billion and they went out and said, Warren Buffett invested $5 billion. And everybody said, man, if Warren Buffett's investing, then they must be solid. We're looking for a place to put our money. Uh, that's got to be a good place. Makes sense. Somebody they trust invested. Here's the problem. Warren Buffett did not invest in public stock. He invested in below the line stock. He bought a different grade of stock called a preferred stock. So here's what it meant. Warren Buffett invested $5 billion in preferred stock, meaning that he made 6% on his money before anybody who invested in public stock made anything. I'll say that again, <laughs> preferred. Mm -hmm. His investment was preferred over anybody else's. That was not widely touted in the news. So when you feel like your income is not really doing what you want it to do. When you feel like your investments are not growing the way that you want it to grow, it's because there's lots of different components to how money works that you have not been privy to. So you've got to focus on below the line. And I got to be honest with you, before you start deploying money in somebody else's business, you need to look in the mirror and say, what is God telling me to do in my life? What's the opportunity? Maybe you love your job. Awesome. Stay there, but find ways to deploy capital that you have more control of. Get into real estate. I can show you ways in real estate to, to deploy cash and, and to gather assets right now where people are hurting. They're struggling. They're losing their house. And you can be the person to come in and maybe you don't make them whole because honestly, it's not our job to jump in into their 
struggle. It's our job to continue to steward the resources properly because they're not ours, they're God's. And if we're not steward them wisely, then we're not handling things properly. Look at the, ta the, the parable of the talents. And so when you start looking at that, you say, okay, I can help people maybe not get in as bad a position as they would be otherwise. I can possibly save them from having to have a foreclosure on their credit rating while simultaneously putting myself in position to be able to gather assets and put myself in a better financial position to make the impact that God has asked me to make. You see, we've got to start thinking beyond just our lives. We've got to understand that we're just a small piece of the puzzle and a big, big puzzle. But if we're not functioning properly, then we're the missing link. We've got to step into our purpose. So you got to focus on below the line. And the best way to do that is to focus on you.